Amen. Uh, good evening. I got a couple of these things in the mail. I got to do this before we get get going. Uh, we get these uh, notifications in the mail for uh, sex offenders that move into certain areas of town. And David uh, Sagerstrom, this is one guy, and Troy Lester is another guy. You know, I've been counseling these guys for years. I know exactly what's wrong with them. And I just want to have a little word of prayer over those two gentlemen. Lord, uh, we're going to pray for these two guys tonight. Uh, I know what's wrong with them. I know they've got lost demons. I know they were hurt very bad in childhood. I know they've got rejection demons. I know that they've done some horrible things and they uh, carry around enormous demonic anger and self-hatred and they're very hurt people. And uh, I know the Holy Ghost is able to heal them. Uh, in our society, they are always deemed a sex offender. They claim they can't be cured. I know that's not true. The Spirit of the Lord is able to cure and heal a sex offender. And uh, he's able to heal a mentally ill patient. Uh, patients that are seriously mentally ill, we've seen them cured. Nothing is beyond the great power of the Spirit of the Lord. And uh, I pray that you'll bring conviction to these two guys. Uh, society has labeled them perverts. And they've done some horrible things, and we are 100% against everything they did, because that's all the devil. But we're asking you to save them and hunt them down, convict them of their sin, tell them you love them, and give them hope so they don't have to live the rest of their lives in misery and commit suicide in 15 or 20 years, as so many do. Amen. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Now's your time to visit Phoenix. The weather is <clears throat> fantastic out there. So beautiful. We who live here year-round pay a large price for this weather. You have to hang on through the summer, and there are some tough days during the summer. It's hotter than the gates of something here in July and August, but it's all over now, and it's gorgeous here. Now That's why we all moved here. <clears throat> oh, thank you for coming tonight. We're going to Take a look at the incredible man of God, Jonathan. And we're going to learn from him. Uh, Jonathan and Saul are two of the most interesting people in the Bible. Saul, in particular, is one of my favorite people in the Bible. He has an incredible range of pathology that is absolutely fascinating. He went from a uh, humble servant of God who was prophesying for the Lord and a good man to a psychopath. And the Bible kind of shows how he went through those steps from being here to ending up here, committing suicide and burning in hell. He went from here prophesying to Jehovah, the Hebrew God, and then he ended up there, dead, burning in hell. Incredible story. He's one of my favorite people in the Bible. The revelations in Saul's life are fantastic, and tonight I'm going to talk about his son, his firstborn son, who saw the whole thing. He had a bleacher seat, front row, on the life of King Saul, and overcame the whole thing. Not a lot of enthusiasm for Jonathan tonight, but this will pick up as we go. See, what I like to do is start out real slow, very boring, and then build it up. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's the hill song in me. <clears throat> All right, Familiar Spirits coming up, Halloween. Boom, that's a really interesting seminar. A lot of good videos in that seminar of spiritualism, which is kind of fascinating. As you know, I'm on the radio every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Thank you. It's all local here in Arizona. I'm on uh, worldwide on the Internet. I'm on Omni. FM, you can catch all those shows anytime you want to off the website. I'm on every night of the week, seven nights a week at nine o'clock on Dark Sky Radio. It's a secular station. 44,000 listeners last week. I'm down from 78,000 the week before. So, don't know what happened. If you'd like to donate to the ministry and you shop, talking to ladies for a minute, go to smileamazon.com. 
even if you're not smiling, it doesn't matter. Put in our ministry name. There it is. Boop. That's our ministry name. And they'll donate to us every time you buy something. Tonight's teaching on the great man of God, Jonathan, is on House of Healing AZ on YouTube. Please ask me for these miracle lists or send me a complaint or an idea on Mike at HardcoreChristianity.com. And I answer all my emails. I wrote three books. Right now, one's being revised on the boogeyman. It's not available in the bookstore. I'll have that printed here in a few weeks. If you want to go through a deliverance training course, man, this is one of the best ones out there, if I do say so myself, because it has actual deliverances included in the teaching. So it's not just teaching, it's teaching and showing. There's not a lot of enthusiasm for showing, but what I do in these videos, I start it very boring and keep it down. It's very exciting, but I force it down. And then it builds to a Hillsong laser light show. <laughs> Okay, so I'll on the video there. Don't forget our healing room on Thursday night. It's the bomb with Brother Rick and the ministry team. Wow, lots of people getting incredible deliverances. Thanks for your donations. Those are on the boxes on the doors. Thank you for helping us pay the bills. You can donate on the website there. And I'll see you in Tucson on October 20th, Sunday morning, for two services at the Good News Community Church. We had a good friend in the ministry donate us some cactuses. You can have one for any donation you feel is appropriate. You decide. They're good cactuses. They're expensive. Either right outside the parking lot here if you'd like to have one. You may. Bless you. Jonathan means what? Yes, the gift of Jehovah. And he certainly was. Let's go. Saul reigned one year. and When he reigned two years, he chooses 3,000 men of Israel. Saul, as I mentioned to you, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He went from here to here. And the road he traveled was fantastic. Very interesting. Very revealing about mental illness and how you get severely mentally ill. Fascinating story. I haven't taught that Saul teaching in a few years. Maybe I'll do it again here. Great story of the rise and fall of King Saul. Well, Jonathan saw the whole thing. And uh, Saul decides to do something nuts. And in a nutshell, here's what happened. He was your typical Christian in the United States. Saul got in the ministry. Things started going well. He started to get a big head over it textbook 21st century Christianity every person that goes into ministry is attacked by the devil with an avalanche of compliments he has a satanic wave of compliments coming to you if you go into the ministry he's going to crush you he's going to have everybody walking up to you Man, you're, you look great. You're really a good teacher. Even your t-shirts look good. Wow, you're awesome. That was a great message. You, as President Trump would say, it's all bull. <laughs> shuffy. It's all bull shuffy. That's a setup. Well, it worked on King Saul. He flooded in with compliments, and he went from a insecure boy growing up in a family. He was gangly and too tall, and he always felt out of place and insecure. And in fact, when Samuel came to anointing king, they said he was hiding among the stuff. He would hide. He was so insecure. Well, this king stuff started to get to him, and he started to let it go to his head. And he started to think he was above everybody, including the high priest, Samuel. Once your ego starts to take over, you are sliding now down the hill like a skier into the gates of hell. Once you leave 
your spot of brokenness and humbleness, you are into Satan's divine trinity. You are screwed. You're blued. And you're tattooed. As soon as you transition out of being a humble, broken person into thinking you got, you got some good stuff, you are headed for the fires. And you're going to take a beating. You won't conceive nor believe. Saul did. He starts a war with the Philistines with no hope of winning in the natural. Absolutely none. He arrogantly starts a battle with the Philistines. And it is frightening. He's only got 3,000 soldiers. This guy put the M in Moron. 2,000 were with Saul in, a, in a Mishmash. And they actually should, I guess, should be mitch, Mismatch. And 1,000 were with Jonathan, Gebeah, a Benjamin. And that's where Saul was from. Remember? King Saul was from tribe of Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. Well, he only could find 3,000 decent fighters. 3,000, that's it. Okay? At that time, they're being dominated by the Philistines. Philistines own them. They're slaves. They're under the rule of the Philistines, idol worshipers. Saul says, well, the rebellion begins now. Well, Jonathan, the Bible says, started the battle and no matter what his dad did, no matter what his dad said, Jonathan, the man of God, always honored his father. Okay? Why? Because he didn't want to bring a curse on his life. Christians today are cursed all over the place. You wouldn't believe how many cursed Christians there are. Why? They dishonored their father and their mother. And they used an excuse the devil gave them well, it's okay because my father and mother were psychos. They were complete idiots and morons. They deserve to be dishonored. See? And everybody agrees with you. Yeah, everything they did was wrong. We're all in 100% agreement. Nobody would agree your parents were sane. Doesn't matter. The curse that falls on the child falls regardless of the behavior of the parents. The child has to honor the parents, not agree with what they did, but honor their parents to keep that curse off of you. If the curse falls on you, you're staring at a life of broken relationships, poverty, homelessness, stupidity, and an everyday sucks existence. Curses are horrible because they bleed into everything. They ruin everything, no matter how much you pray, no matter how many people pray for you, no matter how many words you get from prophetic people, your life sucks every single day. A curse is something that has to be broken off you tonight. Jonathan, unlike Christians of today, was not a spiritually ignorant person. He would not allow that curse to fall on him. He honored his father no matter how nuts the guy got. YouTubers, I'm helping you. Jonathan then sees a three, the battle, 6,000 people, they don't have a hope in hell of winning. He, he stays with his dad. He goes out by faith and strikes the first blow in Geba. That was Saul's hometown. The Philistines heard what Jonathan did, and all Israel heard Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines. Well, it wasn't Saul that did it. Saul had a coward streak in him. He wore a big kingly robe, but if you took the robe off, there was a yellow streak down his back. Jonathan was a man of character and integrity and didn't have a yellow streak. He had a faith streak. People who have fear have no faith. Fear wipes out faith. You could memorize ten verses and word of faith that to your faith falls up. Blabbing the scriptures out. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen because the demons looked inside of you and saw fear. The fear wiped out your word of faith babblement. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's not going to work. With God, all things are possible. Blah. No, they're not. Not for you because you got fear. Oh, nobody's listening. 
YouTubers are listening though, even though people here don't listen. You got fear? You can kiss your Bible verse goodbye. Saul had a coward streak in him. He wasn't fighting anybody. Jonathan took off and won the first battle. The Philistines saw Israelites. They were anti-Semitic, right? They hated Jews. Hello? Yeah. Everybody hates Jews. All over the planet Earth, somebody hates Jews. Didn't do a thing to them. Doesn't matter. It's all spiritual. Everybody hates Jews. Here in America, we're not allowed to hate anybody. This is a land of free and home of brave. A whole bunch of people in America hate Jews. Why? It's all satanic. It don't make any sense. It's as stupid as hating blacks. It's ridiculous. Your skin color has nothing to do with the content of your character, if I may quote the great Martin Luther King Jr. If I may quote that today. It has nothing to do with your, your skin color has nothing to do with anything. Right? Well, not these Philistines. They hated Jews. They were an abomination to them. They hated their guts. They called the people together after Saul in Gilgal. Saul blew the trumpet through the land. Let the Hebrews hear. <laughs> no, they're not going to hear you because, first of all, they know you're a coward. Number two, we shouldn't even be in this battle anyway. Kind of like America. We'll, we'll go overseas and blow your country up for you. We'll blow you right through the gates of hell. Then we'll rebuild your country for you. Then we'll stay there for 50 years. Yes, sir. Who's paying for all that? Give, come on now. Give yourself a hand. The taxpayers of the new United States of America. There you are. You're paying taxes? Oh, you're not working. Okay, you're working? Anybody working? Nobody working? Okay, we're all off the hook. We don't pay for any of these wars. Let the Hebrews hear. Here, time for war. Uh, time out, dude. The Philistines gathered themselves to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots. 30,000 chariots. You got to be kidding. Thir chariots. That was like having tanks back then. Chariots were like tanks now. You got 6,000 Jews facing 30,000. Really? Oh, wow. Can you say hopeless? They had 6,000 Jews fighting. The Philistines had 6,000 horsemen. Those were like armored cars now. Horsemen. You couldn't fight horsemen. They had those long spears. On, and they attacked the people. They'd stab you six feet away. They had no chance of winning. They have a ghost of chance in hell of winning. They had so many people, they looked like sand on the seashore. You talk about a mismatch. Saul called it. Hey, this is your battle. They came up and pitched at mismatch. East from Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw they were in a strait. Oh, wow. That's an understatement. I'm in a strait. I got 6,000 soldiers. They got 30,000 chariots. Yeah, I'm in a strait. The people got distressed. Oh, no kidding. <clears throat> you can tell the difference between human fear and demonic fear all the time. Human fear is real. Huh? I was standing in the ocean one time when I was in California. I went to Anaheim High School when I was young. We went out to the ocean one day, and I was standing there looking around, enjoying myself. Bang! Something banged into me going that way. Clunk. I had to... Wow, and suddenly my, suddenly my imagination took off. My God, this is, I'm in a Spielberg movie. <laughs> well, you can imagine, I started backing out of the beach. So, you know, I'm not in the mood to have something bang into me. 
<laughs> well, that's human fear. That's real fear. That could have been, I don't know what that was. I never did know what it was. I didn't hang around to find out. Demonic fears, unrealistic fears. They're fear, fears that, that are created by demons in the form of a delusion. You know, if you go there, everybody's going to hate you. They're going to look down on you. Everybody. They always embellish negativity. Okay? Particularly in people who have mental illnesses. They always have chronic negative thoughts coming through their mind that are like grandiose negativity. That's demonic fear. Human fear is more reality-based, <coughs> correct? You turn on YouTube and you watch robberies at Circle K's and stuff. They're all over YouTube. Click it on there. Guy walks in with a gun. Hey, that's real fear. That's, a, that's not a delusion. The guy's got a gun. If you're sitting there panicking when nobody's there, <clears throat> that's a demonic delusion causing you fear. There's a difference between real fear and demonic fear. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Well, this is real fear here. 30,000 chariots, and we got 6,000 soldiers. Guess what happens? Well, people who have fear, remember, don't have any faith. So you, the only option then is to run. You don't have any faith. God's going to help you. So you run. As soon as you lose your faith, every human being has a urge to do what? Run. That's a general instinct of a human, self-preservation. So if you have a delusion of fear and you run, you're running in fearful delusions that aren't real. And my dad used to say, I'll let you know when it's time to panic. See? You don't panic too early. You get the signal to panic. Then it's okay. These Jews saw legitimate human fear, and since they had no faith in God, a Christian who has no faith in God, who yields to fear, automatically runs to save their life. You feel an instinct to run. Because you know you're not going to make it. Because without Faith, fear dominates the person's life. These Jews are running for the hills like you can't even believe. They're hiding like moles. They're hiding in rocks. And put, they're, I mean, they're out of here. We're out of here. This is after the king called them. They don't have any faith in Saul. They knew he was mentally ill. They knew he was going nuts. They knew he had a coward streak in him. Hello? You know, people act like they... Support their leader. Oh, wonderful. But when the chips are down, the real feelings about that person come out. And if they don't respect and believe in them, they'll run. They'll turn on them. They'll leave. Correct? Human nature. <clears throat> well, some of the people ran and went over here. Some of them went there. 1 Samuel 13. And all the people followed Saul when he's running, trembling. So Saul runs to the Gilgal and tarries there seven days. And Samuel had told him that I will come after seven days and we will give a burnt offering to the Lord. Now the burnt offerings were offerings that the Jews gave to God to acknowledge his sovereignty and acknowledge that he was their king of kings and lord of lords. So they would have a burnt offering like, almost like a worship service. Like we would, we would praise the Lord and glorify his Incredible name above all names. That, that's what we're doing. That would be we would be kind of doing a spiritual burnt offering. So only the priest is allowed to do a burnt offering. Nobody else is allowed to do it. Absolutely no, under no circumstances. No fill-ins. Samuel didn't go to Gilgal, so the people left him. They're scared. So Saul said, Oh my god, the people are scattering from me. I'm losing my support. I better do the burnt offering myself. Samuel's late. Okay? Here's, here, once again, Saul is like your typical born-again Christian. When God told you to wait and see the salvation of the Lord, but you panicked 
because of fear and when a Christian panics they take matters into their own hands and do it themselves yes, sir. Yes, sir. chronic condition house foreclosure job layoff money food kids doesn't matter what it is if God doesn't answer in the Christian's mind at a certain point the Christian will then panic through fear and take the project on themselves not waiting stand back and see the salvation of the Lord God told him I told you I was going to come through I always do come through you read it in my word but fear causes a Christian to trash God's word and then go do it themselves Saul did it himself. He said, hey, Samuel's late, so I'm going to do the burnt offering. Hey, I'm king anyway. I'm the boss. For Samuel 13, it came to pass that as soon as they made an end of the burnt offering, there it is. 99% <clears throat> of Christians don't understand that their miracle was only one more day away. They panicked here. They gave in here. And God was already going to come through for them there. Amen. Most of the time, that's how it works. Your miracle is just over there, but you quit here. It happens all the time, constantly. Why? Lack of faith allows the devil entrance into your life and bring destruction. Why? Fear is his red carpet. He strolls in like these mentally ill Hollywood stars on Academy Award night. All these sick people get out of a limo and they go down these red carpets. All of them just gaspingly nuts. And they think that's normal. See, normal people don't walk around on red carpets. No, no. Yeah, very, very abnormal people fly them sometimes. But you, normal people do not walk on a red carpet. That's sick. You're a sick person. You're a narcissist. You got out of a limo and you're walking on a red carpet and there's flash bulbs going off everywhere. Yeah, as President Trump would say, you're sick. <laughs> Samuel shows up right after Saul panicked. See that? So Saul then now has to make excuses, which he's very good at. All people with egos are good at excuses. Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, hey, the people were leaving me, man. You were late. See, people who are egotized and self-centered, the problem is always somebody else. They always blame somebody else. It's God's fault. It's your fault. It's my neighbor's fault. It's my family's fault. It's the way I was raised. Oh my God. Everybody's at fault but me. Don't you understand me? Yeah, we understand you. You're sick. <laughs> we do understand you. You left your faith here and you rode Satan's red carpet of fear. <laughs> and your miracle was here and you stopped here. When does this teaching get better, Mike? Just a minute. Hang on there. <clears throat> Saul said, well, it's excuse time now because everybody with egos, self-centered, religious, they all got excuses. Oh, everybody's got an excuse for everything. Well, the people were scattering on me. And you were late, dude. And I don't know. The Philistines were coming down. They were going to clobber us. No kidding, Sherlock. So Saul then, for a moment, drifts into the world of Satan. Where everything is an I. See, in, in Satan's world, he lost his kingdom because of I. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will walk in the garden of God. Ezekiel. Anybody remember that verse? Spectacular verse. It had five eyes in it. As soon as I takes over, you can be sure. Hell is coming to breakfast for you. Saul turned into Satan here and he says, I said, I said the Philippines came upon me and I have not made supplication of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered a burnt offering 
Samuel then said you See as soon as you start going with I the Holy Ghost comes by and says uh, it's, it's you. It's the problem. Yeah uh -huh. Yeah, I've had marriage counseling cases hundreds of them over the years and when the people come in <coughs> When they come for to see me one spouse is always Secretly trying to get the other spouse fixed oh, yeah. <laughs> and Over 50% of the time I discover it's the spouse that wanted the other one fixed that is equal to or greater problem yes. True. Human nature human nature it's Satan and Saul I uh, well, you, 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 as soon as you start hearing you, 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 that's a red flag. It's them, 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 them. You didn't keep the, you didn't do what you were told. And no kidding. Guess what God had planned to do for you? Oh, you don't understand. See if. When the red carpet of fear entered your soul, you missed out on God's big plan for your life. God has got plans for you you never even heard of. He has plans for you you don't know anything about. You don't even know what he's been thinking. You don't get it. You haven't heard it yet because God doesn't reveal everything all at once. He reveals himself, himself to you in stages as you're ready to receive the revelation. You don't get, bang, everything at once. John, the great apostle, never got revelation when he was calling on Jesus to call fire down and fry these Samaritans. No, that was years ago. John in stages got revelation so that when he was mature in his 90s or whatever it was bang He got the book of revelation incredible Amen. He didn't get that on the boat with Peter fishing. Come on God doesn't reveal everything to you right away He reveals it in stages as you continue to grow in grace and as you continue to have the patience <laughs> To overcome your trials and your tribulations and grow in grace. This is your growth process you learn these revelations in stages, but if you quit here from fear, you will never know Saul, God had attended, his intentions were, and you never knew this, was to establish your kingdom forever. You don't understand, there never was to be a King David. That's blasphemy. No, it isn't. David was a fill in. You just insulted every Jew on the planet. No, I didn't. Had King Saul not opened the door to fear and lost his faith and jumped at the gun and not obeyed from fear, Saul would have been the king of Israel. Into the millennium Check it out But what happened this was before by the way When he lost his kingdom officially with the Amalekites. This is before that This is before King David slew Goliath You follow me this story I'm telling you before all that Hey, you would have been king forever, but guess what? Your kingdom's not going to continue. The Lord is looking for a man after his own heart. Oh, 3,000 years after that verse was written, it's valid right now. Amen. What is he looking for? A born again Christian after his own heart. Somebody who can have faith and believe and not quit just before the miracle arrives. Somebody who won't listen to chronic negativity and act in fear, delusional fear. Oh no.
The Lord's commanded him to be captain over his people because you have not kept the word of the Lord. Twenty first century Christians are massively ignorant. Here's how they live. <coughs> Hallelujah, glory to God, bless the word of God. Holy crap, this sucks, I'm dead in the water. They go from that to that in their life, and they don't understand why that is not working. You can't pump up the Word of God on Monday and then pump up negativity and demons on Tuesday. You're driving a car with flats. This has to be removed. This has to be increased. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Brother Mike, you don't understand. I sing in the choir at Dream City. <laughs> no, you don't understand. Singing in a choir doesn't do you any good when you leave there and you start saying negative things and you start living like that. Doesn't do you a bit of good to sing in Dream City. You can get upgraded and go to Hillsong. Get you a fog machine or a laser light show. You walk out in the parking lot and go right back to saying negative things. and neg You can kiss Hillsong goodbye. You don't get it, do you? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Saul is double-minded. Jonathan wasn't. Well, you could have had a kingdom forever, dude. But it's not going to work out for you. Samuel arose and got up from there, and Saul numbered the people with him. It had now dwindled down. This whole war thing was Saul's idea, see? He went to the Hebrews and he said, Hey, these Philistines have got weapons of mass destruction. We better go get them. Oh, that weapon of mass destruction thing was used 3,000 years later. That worked out real good. And they're all, they're all over the place. Demons have weapons of mass destruction. It's called negative thoughts in your mind. <coughs> now he's down from 6,000 to 600. 30,000 chariots alone facing him. Saul and Jonathan, the people with them, they stayed at Gibeah of Benjamin. The Philistines encamped at mismatch. The spoilers came out. What happened was the Philistines said, hey, this is a this is a slam dunk. These Jews are going to get slaughtered again. We've beaten them before. What we'll do is we'll split up three groups of only 20 men. Okay? And we'll hit these Jews from all three sides. Oh, man, you don't understand. No, you don't. That's exactly what happened to you. You don't just get hit one way from the demons. Temptations hit you this way, then they hit you that way. You're sitting there going, I don't believe it. I'm getting hit from two and three and four sides at once. That's what spirit, that's what the devil does. He rarely just gives you one shot. No, if he's got an opening, he takes several shots. Correct? Oh. They're going to get them from three companies, 20, 24. We're going to smash these. They only got 600 guys left. Well, this thing gets worse. Check this out. Oprah was there. Uh, it says they turned to the way to Oprah. <laughs> and uh, there she is. Oprah is a descendant of these people right here. They're, they're uh, idol worshiping Philistines. That's where we got our Oprah. She's on, and they started right here. There they are. Check it out. Yeah. Look over here. There's Oprah. There's Bethlehem. Down here would be uh, Jerusalem. You get an idea of what we're talking about here? This is northeast Israel. So then Syria would be over here. Philistinian, Philistine, the Philistines were basically, kind of, in, in a way, Syrians in that area. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at here. There was no smith in the land of Israel. What? What do you mean there's no smith? Well, you got one here tonight. And lucky you. Yeah. 
Here's the lucky folks. No, this is even worse than that. A smith was someone that made weapons. What is what is a smith? What's a blacksmith? Those guys were vital. Swords, exactly. Uh, knives, swords, uh, spears. I mean, blacksmiths were elevated human beings in a society. Well, the Philistines had gone through Israel after they conquered them, and what did they do? Look at Valenzuela. The new president came in. What, did, what was one of the first things he did? Confiscated all the weapons of the people. Why? So they can't do anything. You don't want people to run around with weapons. They can't fight back. The Philistines went through the nation of Israel and they took all the smiths. They disarmed them. Oh, man. Let me think about this for a second. I'm, the, I'm King Saul. And I'm a Rhodes Scholar. And I'm going to start an uprising here with 6,000 men who don't have any weapons. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, I'm smart. Yeah. King Saul was the Fredo of kings. I'm smart. Really, Fredo. You're going to start a war with the Philistines, are you? With 30,000 chariots? You got 6,000 men? They don't have any weapons. <laughs> oh, you're a Harvard graduate, aren't you, Saul? Boy, he's a genius. <clears throat> oh, that's really something. Came to pass on the day of the battle, there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people. You got to be kidding me. You can't be serious. Yeah, that's what John McEnroe would say. If he, you cannot be serious. Is this as, is this as nutty a story as you ever heard? It's got to be one of them, at least. Okay, the other ones with them would be, be re related to your family members. Okay, let's go on to this. It came to pass that Jonathan said to the young man that bore his armor, for Samuel 14, let's go to the Philistines' garrison on the other side. So they got three groups of Philistines. They've all got swords and spears. No problemo. Because they have blacksmiths in their society. Hmm. The Jews don't have them. That's a problem. So Jonathan says, hey, I'm going to do a sneak attack with just me. So you don't understand that if you're not a person with demonic fear and chronic negative thoughts, and you've replaced that process in your mind with true faith in God, you as a single person are, in fact, in the majority. You as a single person do, in fact, have the upper hand. Because you and the Holy Ghost makes a majority, no matter how many people are facing you. Amen. Family members, relatives, co-workers, kooks on TV. It doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost is not going to fight for you. If you're a double-minded man who's unstable in all his ways, you're on God Sunday and you're on crap on Monday. Not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. Uh -uh. You know why you come here every Friday? You hear stuff that you're not going to hear on TV. <laughs> Nobody in the right mind would teach this kind of stuff. Nobody in the right mind. I never claimed to be in my right mind. <laughs> Jonathan, who doesn't have chronic negative thoughts, who doesn't live a double-minded life, says, hey, I'll take the other garrison by myself. I'll go up there, and here's why. He says to his armor bearer, Saul runs off and hides again in, in Migran with only 600 people left with no weapons. Here you go. See, Saul moved. He moved down here. He's running for the hills. Follow us? Well, Saul's got a yellow streak because he's double-minded. And in the group is more bad news. 
More bad news among the Jews. Not only do they not have any weapons, now they're down to 600 people. This is a bad news week for Israel. Ahiah, the son of uh, Ahitub, Ichabod's brother. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't want to see him today. The son of Phineas. Phineas, ah, oh, jeez. Pull, come on, pull. The son of Eli. Oh, Eli, oh, dear God. Where's the nut? Where's the spears? Right. Right. Eli's cursed right. by God. Yes, Thrown out. Yes. They're around working the ephod. Oh, let me tell you something, friends. When you're walking on the red carpet of fear laid out by the devil, nothing works. Prayer, babbling out verses, word of faith, ephods, lights, cameras, fog machines, laser shows, nothing. Nothing works. Nothing works. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Ephods are the last thing Jonathan needed. So Jonathan doesn't stay hang around the ephod. He steps out in faith because he is not double-minded. He knows the Lord. He knows that Saul called this insane battle over weapons of mass destruction. Ugh. They're hiding them. Ooh. And he knew God was not going to forsake Israel, even though Saul was an incompetent leader. If you live in a country, a city, a family, a town with an incompetent leader, father is going to stick to you closer than a brother. You maintain your faith. It doesn't matter who the ruler is in your neighborhood. The real ruler is with you. Amen. <clears throat> Jonathan disappeared. He didn't tell Saul he disappeared. You know why? He knew his dad was a coward. He'd panic if his son was gone. Because his son was the only person in the family had integrity and had character. Jonathan steps out on faith by himself. Listen, it's going to happen to you. One of these days, you're going to have to step out on faith by yourself. Everybody's going to step aside, and they're going to let you go. They're not going to see what God put in your heart. They're not going to believe what Father gave you. Someday, somehow, you're going to have to step out on your own. Jonathan wasn't going to stay with his dad for a little bit. He had to go with his heavenly father. And he stepped out on his anointing by himself. Didn't tell anybody he was gone. He said, let's go get one of these garrisons. They're uncircumcised. Maybe that Jehovah will work for us. For there is no restraint to Jehovah. He can save us if we have many. He can save us if we have few. That sounds like someone who's not double-minded. Oh, that's a guy you want to hang around there. That's a guy that's got actual faith without fear. That's a guy without a panic disorder. That's a guy without an anxiety disorder. That's somebody who knows Jehovah and what he can do. Jonathan, the man of God. Went out by himself. The cowards all stayed with Saul hiding under the pomegranate tree. That's why pomegranate trees are grown now. They're good for people that are cowards. And his armor bearer said to him, I know you. I know you. He's Jonathan's armor bearer, not Saul's. Saul's armor bearer knew Saul, so it was time to commit suicide. God wasn't going to save us. And this armor bearer knew it. He didn't want to do it. Jonathan's armor bearer left him without double-mindedness. You see, if you hang around somebody who's not double-minded, <coughs> it'll rub off on you. Amen. You hang around people with fear and anxiety and negative talk and gutless losers, Sooner or later, you become a gutless loser. 
oh, Brother Mike, you know, you don't sound like you're on TBN. No, I'm not on TBN. <laughs> That's why I'm not. Do what's in your heart, Jonathan. I know you personally. Go for it. The armor bearer hung around Jonathan, and therefore he had no fear. Amen. That happened overnight? No. He had worked with him for years. He had saw Jonathan for years. He knew what kind of person he was. Jonathan was one of those rare Christians that had, oh, I hate to say this, integrity. <laughs> Don't stone me. <laughs> Can you imagine meeting a Christian with integrity? Unbelievable. That's, that doesn't happen much anymore, but Jonathan's armor bearer, it had rubbed off on him. He said, go for it. Let's do it. I'm with you. Both of them discovered themselves in the garrison. Hey, we're over here. 20 of them. What happened next? The Philistines start running their mouths. You see, when you're in the majority and you've got the upper hand and everything's going your way, it's real easy to run your mouth like a busted chainsaw. <laughs> Did you think you got the upper hand? You're winning. Oh. See, it's false security. It's ego security, which dissipates quickly. True integrity and true, true character stands in the face of adversity. Pumped up. Pumped up. Bravery fizzles like that. Everybody's a big shot at the weigh-in at the fight. I want to kill him. I want to tear him. I want to eat his children. You get in the ring and you take one shot, all of a sudden reality has hit you. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm in a fight. <laughs> Holy crap. Can somebody, can somebody change my pants before I go out for round two? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. Somebody give me a sponge. Yeah. See, pumped up bravery fizzles like that. It psh, like a hot air balloon. It disappears quickly. The Hebrews, they've come out of their holes where they were hiding. Stinking moles, look at them. They hide in holes. Well, yeah, they're hiding in holes. They say, hey, Jonathan, come up here. Come on up here, boy. We'll show you a thing, and I put a, or two there. I added that because it wasn't complete. See? You don't want to, whenever you're reading the text and you see an omission there, you want to help the Lord out. So I just help him. God there, I just put that or two in there and it just kind of filled in the verse. Say, come on up here, boy. I'll show you a thing or two. See how that rolls? See, feel that? Yeah, that's right. That's how you do it. Well, see, bravery is talk is cheap, see? See, that was what was so weird about Muhammad Ali all those decades. He said it wasn't bragging if you can back it up. Well, this is just bragging here. This is bragging. It's pumped up pride. It's pumped up courage. Oh, I can do that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that stuff fizzles out when the fight starts. Quickly. Fizzles out quickly. Come on up here. Jonathan climbed on his hands and his knees, crawling up the hill, and guess what happened? The armor bearer followed him, and they slaughtered him. Killed all of them. Slaughter, 1 Samuel 14. 20 men, the armor bearer and, Seth and Jonathan, slaughtered them. The armor bearer had to take one of the swords from one of the Philistines. The armor bearer doesn't even have a weapon. But because he knew Jonathan's character, true character, not pumped up pride like the Philistines. Oh, Dagon told us who. Yeah. Yeah, that happened during the Gulf War. Did you have to see that? Allah Akbar. Uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, Allah will give us a great victory. The Iraqi army was surrendering in droves. You, I guess I am getting old. There was a Gulf War a few years ago. Jeez. Why can't this thing be full? And what happened was 
the American army went over there, blew the stuff out of them, and the Iraqi army surrendered t thousands of soldiers, surrendered right out of the gate. What was that? That's pumped up Dagon. That's Philistines. They're all pumped up with a phony, egotistical pride balloon that pops in the midst of real adversity. Which is exactly the way the devil feels. He pumps himself up to be this monstrous Christian killer. But if you stand against him in the word of God and you resist him, he will, like the Philistines, like the Iraqis, flee before you. Satan is bluffing you. He's a bluffer. Come up here, Christian. I'll show you a thing or two. He's not going to show you anything if you walk up there with the faith of Jonathan, except his backside and somebody changing his shorts. Amen. You resist the devil, he will flee from you. Just like the Philistines. Just like the Iraqis. There was no Allah Akbar there. They were surrendering in droves. What happened to Allah? Oops. He ain't around anymore. What happened to Dagon? Oops. He went fishing. That joke was mine. That was a funny joke. That was a funny joke. Jonathan, one man of faith, slaughtered 20 of them. What did that do? When you step out on faith and you don't have a bunch of negativity and lies sucked in your brain, the Holy Ghost steps out with you. And guess what? You do this thing, he does that thing. How do I know that? I can read. Check it out. Check it out. Jonathan stepped out. Suddenly, fear left the Jews and went into the Philistines. They saw what happened. Oh my God, they got one guy slaughtered 20. Well, 600 then is going to slaughter all of us. The garrisons trembled. And suddenly the Spirit of God stepped in. Boom! There was an earthquake. Amen. See, if you'll stop complaining and griping and moaning, the Holy Ghost will send you a massive victory earthquake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, You resist the devil, he will flee from you. But if you re resist him on the red carpet of fear, he not only won't flee, he'll hop on your back. He'll ride you to town. He'll show you a thing or two. They were panicking when they saw the earthquake. What did they start to do there? The watchman of Saul in Gibeah looked and the multitude of uh, the enemy melted. And they were so crazed with fear. They began panicking and hitting each other. It turned into a giant heavy metal mosh pit. You guys that? Yeah, that was funny. Nobody thought it was funny you ever been in a moss pit? I hope yeah. not. But if you've ever seen one, oh man, you're going to get hit in the face. Wow. Yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> That's entertainment. The Philistines panicked so bad, they turned on themselves. Fear will always cause you to turn on even your loved ones. You will verbally abuse them. You will physically abuse them when you're afraid. You will betray them. You will let them down. You will leave them when you get on the red carpet of Satan's fear. Well, I'm not Jonathan. You could be. You could be. You could repent tonight and say, you know what? Yeah, I got a negative mindset. That's, a, that's wrong. I'm giving the devil place. The Bible says don't give the devil place. I'm giving him place. In my head. 
you step out like Jonathan, you're going to get an earthquake of miracles. Oh, Suddenly the Hebrews saw it, and guess what? The armor bearer hung around Jonathan, and he caught the fire of revival. He said, do what's in your heart. I'm with you. Jonathan got the anointing of God on him. Suddenly the other Hebrews caught the revival. Uh, they saw the Philistines panicking. They saw the devil fleeing before you. They saw the deliverances. They saw the healings. They saw the prosperity. They saw the curses being broken off. And suddenly, when people think, they go, oh, you got blessings on your life? Oh, I'm your friend. People who didn't like you before, you see a blessing on you. Suddenly, they're your friends. Can't wait to have a fair-weather friend. They're so sweet. <laughs> Suddenly the other Hebrews saw this. Hey, these were the ones that had abandoned the Jews and joined up with the Philistines. Listen, if you don't have any character or integrity, you live in fear, your own family will join the other side against you. They'll turn on you. Oh, yeah. We call it divorce. We call it other things. They'll turn on you. Because a double-minded man is unstable. In oh, Even the traitors came home. <clears throat> the Lord saved Israel that day. The battle passed over the Beth Haven. Now you see where they're going. They're moving north here. See? They were down here. Now they're moving north. See? There's Oprah. Oprah's always around. She's our girl. First Samuel chapter 18. It came to pass when, when he ended speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Now let's move forward here. Jonathan, the great man of God, saves Israel that day in spite of his dad screwing up constantly. See? His dad started out great. See, In Christianity, it's not how you start out. It's how you end. Right. Saul started out up here prophesying with the prophets. A humble, good man of God. The kingship started to go to his head. And he started to sink. Jonathan watched the whole thing, but refused to become a part of it. He saw his dad deteriorate right in front of his eyes. He saw the whole thing. Jonathan never was a part of it. Well, Jonathan's sitting there that day, and Goliath is marching back and forth. Guess from who? Yeah, they're back. They're back. You know. No matter what you say about Philistines, got to give them credit, man. They're persistent. They're a persistent bunch. Oh, I got to take my tip my hat off to them. They're back again. Only this time they brought reinforcements. They weren't going to get snuck up on by Jonathan this time. Yes, sir. They brought Goliath and his family. Yes, I tell you what. These guys put the fear of God in you. You ever seen a Nephilim? I tell you what. They're ugly. They are. You look at it, you go, oh, geez, like that? You ever seen that? Mm -hmm. But these, these Nephilim were huge. The Bible says that he was nine feet tall, weighed 650 pounds. He had a shield that he carried with him bigger than David. Himself, bigger than the whole body. That, that's how big it was. He had a gigantic spear that had this huge rock on the top of it. It was a tip. He was a monster by any stretch of the imagination. Jonathan goes, whoa. I think I'll sit back and watch this one for a while. <laughs> well, some kid comes up from herding sheep around. Sheep. That was, his, that was his basic training. He went into the military of sheep. <laughs> he learned to fight watching sheep. 
See, it doesn't matter where you came from. God <laughs> will use you when you've got nothing but sheep. All you've got to have is faith without chronic negativity and unbelief and doubt. You cut that off and repent of it, and you leave your faith there, you're staring at a Holy Ghost earthquake. Yeah. And the devil will flee before you. He'll run Amen. with his pants full. Amen. <laughs> it's, it's an absolute fact. It's the truth. It will happen. But a double-minded woman, they're unstable. Uh-oh, you go double-minded on it, you can kiss your earthquake goodbye. Yeah. Nothing. You'll get nothing but more trouble. You like trouble? Stay double-minded. You'll get it day and night. Well, guess what? King David shows up and picks up the stones, puts them in his thing, boop, runs out there. You know the story. Jonathan thought, saw the whole story. Well, listen, let me share, let me share something with you. People that are evil or wicked know it, and so they'll they're kind of be drawn to each other, you know. Mm. They can feel, you can feel somebody else's soul. Mm. And people that have integrity and character, if you have it, you'll, it kind of draws you, you kind of, you can kind of feel it. It kind of pulls you in there. You, know? you get around some people that are pieces of human pond scum, you go, you don't even know them, you go, oh, gee, man. <laughs> You kind of the sense. Well, that's your that's their soul. Their soul is, has iniquity in it, and you know if you don't have that kind of iniquity, you go, I don't know. That's yeah, I don't like that. Well, David saw Jonathan. Jonathan go, wow. This kid was looking for five Nephilim that day. Five of them. He had five stones. He wanted all five brothers. He goes, now that's that's my new BFF. <laughs> David, King Dan, John, Jonathan, he, he, his mother didn't raise no fool. His dad raised, tried to raise a fool, but he didn't go for it. He didn't go for it. And they became what? Wow. Their souls just bonded together like you wouldn't even believe. It was, it was true brotherly love. Now, soul ties are extremely dangerous, as you can imagine. Some of them are positive and some of them are negative. You can have a positive soul tie to someone, and that's good. For example, a husband and wife. You can have a negative soul tie to someone. And these things are extremely dangerous. They're hard to break off. The relationship's hard to break. The spirits transfer. The curses transfer. It is a certified nightmare. They develop through different things. Love, fake love, sex and lust, different things cause soul ties. You can have a good soul tie to your spouse, and you can have a negative soul tie to a spouse. Seen it all the time. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the, these two get divorced, but they're still seeing each other once in a while. You know? Uh, they can't quite get out of it. You know? You can have a good soul tie to a son or daughter, absolutely, or a bad one. You become a codependent. You become part of their destruction. You keep bailing them out and you're too good to them. The child then turns into a certified societal maniac. Why? Because of you. You had a bad soul tie with the child. You should have let the child go and suffer the consequences so they would repent and so on. Soul ties are good. Soul ties are bad. Got to analyze them properly. There's a difference between them being a soulmate and a soul tie. There's a big difference. Big difference. Jonathan, Samuel 18. Now we move forward a couple chapters. They made a covenant, and because he loved him like his own soul, and Jonathan stripped himself of his robe. See, jo Jonathan was the prince of Israel, he was next in line to be king. He would have been the king after Saul fizzled himself out. That takes a tremendous amount of character to humble yourself like that 
and see God's will to your detriment? See, to Saul, everything was about him. That's all he ever focused on. I want this, I want that, this went bad, that went bad. It's me, 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 me. Jonathan was the opposite. It wasn't all about him. That's an odd place to be with Christians, isn't it? When it's not all, you don't see that often. Jonathan said, hey, this is, I see this miracle before me. I saw the Goliath go down. God has chosen this kid to replace my own dad. Wow. So Jonathan says, hey, I'm going to give you my prince robe since you will be the next king. Here's my sword. Here's my girl. That was a complete acceptance and total surrender to God's will that David would someday be king. But Saul hated him. You know the story of everything David did. Saul then goes through this process of developing borderline personality disorder and possibly schizophrenia. He becomes a psychotic pariah. And it shows in this text how he gradually sinks through jealousy. Jealousy is a cancer of the soul. It ate Saul alive. He had all kinds of paranoia and fears of David. David never did anything to hurt the guy. Served him constantly. Jonathan never turned on his dad. Even though he knew his dad was nuts. Served his dad. Stayed with him. It, you see any integrity here? This is a Holy Ghost integrity. This is integrity in the face of normalcy where you wouldn't have any support of a person who did that kind of behavior. He said, hey, I want to kill the guy. King Saul went from a prophesying humble man of God here to a murderer now here. He's not done. He gets worse. Can anybody fall? Anybody can fall who takes their eyes off the Lord. Any Christian can fall no matter who they are. No matter how many of the gifts they have. No matter what kind of anointing they have. Doesn't matter. They fall all the time. He says he's going to kill you, David. Listen, I got a plan here. You go hide. I'll stand and find my father in the field. You go hide out in the field there. I'll talk to him about you, says Samuel 19. And then I'll tell you what he says. Right? So Jonathan, who has in character and integrity, is not trying to start a fight. He's trying to mend one. King Saul was like Antifa. They're looking to throw a milkshake in your face. He wanted to calm them down. And have peace between the two. Right? He says, hey, what do you, why do you want to kill the guy? Let's, let, he hasn't done anything. He's, he's a good servant. And Saul buys it. And Jonathan brings David back in. He patches it back up. for Samuel 19. So he's back with him. You know the story. There was a bunch of incidences. He would play instruments for him when demons attacked Saul. He would always help him. He served him. Continuously served him. Why? Because King David had the character of Jonathan who had the character of the Holy Ghost. God had told him this is the office of the king and David and Jonathan would never disgrace it. Even though there was a disgraceful person temporarily in that office. They would never disgrace it. What's really in your heart will always come out during tough times. It won't come out while you're casually sitting there watching Gone with the Wind with a bowl of ice cream. Not a lot of fights going on there. Not a lot of temptations. Doesn't require a lot of faith to overcome to go to the refrigerator and get another bowl of ice cream. That's not a big challenge for you. But when the devil comes and puts the heat on you, what kind of person you are really comes out then. 
and that's who the person really is No problem everything is great. Oops something else happens first Samuel chapter 20 Saul can't stand it anymore. His mental illness is continuing to worsen, so he flips. And what he was really thinking when he wanted him to bring David back came out. See? If you listen to a person who's double-minded, you don't have to say one word. All you got to do is sit there and listen to them. And as you listen to them, eventually their real self will come out. <coughs> what they really think will come out. I told you that before I had a lady come in to see me for counseling and she was in there for two hours. <coughs> she talked almost the whole time. The demons attacked me while she was in the office uh, trying to remind me of one of my ex-wives. Um, <laughs> I fought it off. Fought it off. Fought it off. And I just sat there listened to her and I gave her uh, attention and I uh, looked at her with interest and I heard, listened to everything she said and I said, I might have said a few sentences in a couple hours, but after we were done, she said, you see, you're the best counselor I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm not making that story up. I make up a lot of stories. That one wasn't one of them. And she got up and I... I gave her a hug and she started crying. I said about three sentences to her, gave her a hug and she left healed. She couldn't believe that somebody would actually care enough to sit there and listen to her talk and share herself. She couldn't believe it. And then when I hugged her and apologized to her for all the people that hurt, I apologized to her by proxy. Yes. Right. It broke her. Wow. See? A lot of times you don't have to do anything. The Holy Ghost is there. Yeah. <laughs> and he's the great counselor. Yeah. I'm just an yeah. instrument of whatever. Amen. He is the great one. Period. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. I ain't got any earthquakes. The Holy Ghost got earthquakes. That's right. Victory quakes. Victory yeah. quakes. So then Saul is so angry at Jonathan now, he won't turn David over, he starts cursing him by cursing his mother. Now, it was the worst thing he could have done in Jewish society was to curse the person's mother. This shows you how sick Saul was. He says, uh, uh, don't you know that you're throwing your entire life away? Don't you understand that? You're the king when I'm gone. You're blowing everything son see there's more important things in life than material things Amen. and money and wealth there's Amen. there's spiritual treasures you can lay up in heaven that no one will ever take away from you that are that give you staggering wealth on the other side Amen. Christians only like what they see you know but if you take the blinders off and look spiritually in your future you'll see something so spectacular you won't even believe it. you'll change your whole life now and start serving the Lord tonight. You could be so rich in eternity, it's not even funny. It's ridiculous. In eternity, Bill Gates is a pauper. You, you have money. Jonathan's character looked past King Saul's mental illness and the fact that he was supposed to be king. He went with God's will that appears to be a personal detriment. But he knew that in the long run, it was his victory. That should have landed. You make a sacrifice for God, and it looks like you've given something up for yourself. You've actually laid up for yourself treasures in heaven. Amen. Jonathan walked away from the kingship of Israel 
and followed God's will. He had chosen the sheep boy to be the king. And then he showed Jonathan, hey, here's the kind of anointing I got on this kid. Check out Goliath here in about two minutes. Clunk. Head in his hand. As soon as he raised his head, it happened again. Jonathan saw it. He said, hey, this looks like a repeat of the garrison I routed ten years ago. The Philistines, like the Iraqis, running for the hills. Listen, if you'll start to do the right thing and change your character and your attitude and how you speak, the devil will flee from you. You won't even believe how fast he'll run. He has no power over the Holy Ghost. He has power over you if you don't use him. Now go get King David. I'm going to murder him. That's it. <clears throat> Jonathan said, I don't understand. Dad, what has he done? Here, Jonathan, in desperation, makes a mistake. He starts talking to someone that's mentally ill and tries to cure the person using intellectual human logic. It isn't possible. I was a secular counselor for 25 years. I know all about it. You put them in therapy, you put them in group therapy, you give them medications, you do this and that. You, do. Hey, you, can, you can talk to mental illness demons so the cows all come home. They're not going to be cured. That's right. You're not listening. You don't get it. They're not going to be cured because there's a spirit in the person's brain that loves counseling. <laughs> he loves 12 steps. Demons recite them. Bup, 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 bup. Oh, they love therapy. Group therapy? Love it? Go in the group therapy today. <laughs> Great, your demons are partying at group therapy. Demons do the, everything they can to help you get better. <laughs> well, you're not listening. They actually tell you to go get help. Wow. Oh, you're not. You didn't hear any of it. They'll tell you to go get prayer. Wow. Oh, you're not even listening. They'll tell you to go to the prayer group down here at the home home group and get prayer. They'll tell you to go do it. Oh, that's blasphemy. No, it's not. It's intelligence. They know you're not going to get healed. So they have you keep getting prayer, prayer, and prayer. You get now you're getting more discouraged. Wow. Elizabeth. <laughs> They'll send you to preachers. Oh, you're not listening at all. No, this, this thing ain't on. <laughs> they will send you to preachers to get prayer. Demons will. Knowing you're not going to get healed. Wow. You don't know who you're dealing with. You don't understand. They're smarter than we are. Wow. They control all the churches. Oh. They're in charge. Amen. YouTubers are listening. Why should he be slain? He might as well have been talking to a wall. You can't reason with spirits. It's not possible. I'm telling you. It won't work. What Saul do? Now he's starting to drop down to the bottom of his mental illness. Now the Borderline personality disorders is taken over to murderous violence. He picks up a javelin and The prince of Israel standing there and he heaves it at him to murder his own son Yeah Trump would describe him as sick yeah. You're sick <clears throat> yeah, No kidding Jonathan knew, oh, finally the revelation came to him. Had Jonathan contacted me, I'd explain the whole thing. <laughs> Jonathan finally clicks, hey, this isn't going to get fixed. We're in trouble here. King David's in trouble. i got to save him. But I can't forsake my dad. Oh, I hope you're listening. Jonathan had to save his dad and King David. So here Jonathan arises from the table. 
He's furious. <clears throat> Everybody who has a relative that's nuts ends up in this spot sooner or later. Relatives, kids, parents, wives, and husbands drive you nuts. Sooner or later, you're furious at them. You got to get away. I can't take it anymore. Jonathan, furious at his demonic, murderous insanity, bolts to get away from his dad. But it was only temporary. See? As Paul said, don't go to sleep angry. Be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your head. That means don't go to bed angry. Jonathan was angry now at his father's murderous, psychopathic rage and the shame that he heaped on David because he knew David was a man of character. And he arose and you know the story. They got together to love each other for the last time. And they saw him out in the field, and Jonathan had to give him the bad news. And they wept with each other and kissed each other and loved each other. And Jonathan went to the woods, and he said, Fear not, the hand of Saul, my father, will not find you. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, this takes a lot of character to do this kind of thing. This guy's absolutely amazing. He's on the top ten list of something. Here he is sacrificing his own kingship over Israel, voluntarily doing it, handing his robe to David, God's man or God's choice, and <clears throat> his sick, mentally ill, crazed dad, he still wouldn't forsake him. <coughs> My goodness. That's amazing. And his dad was 100% wrong. See? Just like your dad. Your dad was a certified psycho. He was an idiot, a moron, a wife cheater, a wife beater, a drunk. That's your dad was like that. Or something similar. And you forsook him when you were young. You hated him when you were young. You brought a curse on yourself. Jonathan said, I can't do that. I can't live with curses. My dad is 100% at fault. He's mentally ill. He's a vicious, ugly man. He used to be, when I was young, a man of God. Now he's stumbled into a satanic delusion. But, no matter how bad your dad was, you cannot dishonor them. Where's your dad, brother? Oh, he's in prison, man. He, he raped my sister. He robbed a bank. He blew up a... He, he sucks, man. I hate his guts. I haven't seen him in 20 years. Hey, dude, you just brought a curse on yourself. Your dad's in prison for blowing up. You just cursed yourself. Wow. You just brought a curse on yourself. Wow. How'd that happen? The devil outsmarted you. He got you to trash your dad. Hmm, Brother Mike, that's interesting. No wonder I'm, I've got relationship problems and poverty problems and health problems and this and that and that and this and this and that and that and this because the double mind man is unstable in all his ways. No wonder I got all these problems. Hmm. Yeah, I hated my dad. Jonathan, the man of God. No, he's not going to go there. My father will not find you. You will be king over all Israel. I will be next to you. Translation, I was supposed to be king, but Yahweh chose you, so I will become your servant. See, Christians understand that the great ones are servants. Amen. We just taught on that three or four weeks ago on Philip and Stephen. They both learned God's mighty power through being servants. Amen. 
Jonathan, the man of God, saw the whole thing clearly. I'll become your servant. It's a great story. I think, anyway. They two made a covenant, covenant and then they left. What happened next? Well, you know the rest of the story. King Saul, of course, sunk deep into his demonic delusions, reaching the final rung of your life is when you went to witchcraft. That's the end for you. It may not have killed you at that moment when you went to a healer, but you will die from going to that healer several years later. You were playing with a Ouija board and doing spiritual things. didn't kill you right at that moment, but it will kill you early, and you will die in severe pain and sick. Saul went to the witch of Endor, and that ended it for him. Guess who would never forsake him? Yes. Jonathan. Not with his dad this time. See, he left his dad because he knew he was a coward before, years earlier, and routed the Philistines. Then came back to his dad. Now, at the end, he stayed with him. Knowing it was over. And Jonathan was Killed along with Saul. And King David said, I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. This was after he was dead, of course. Samuel 26. You have been pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of a woman. How the mighty have fallen. And the weapons of war have perished. What a great statement in the Bible. That ought to be on a government building somewhere. How the mighty have fallen. See, you get out of God's will and become a double-minded person. You've got a life of chronic negative thinking. You've got attitude problems. You've got argumentative problems. You've got a big mouth. You've got to run your mouth like a busted chainsaw. That's all going to catch up with you. You're going to miss your destiny. You're going to die with nothing but regrets. That's the one thing the devil allows you to keep down the stretch. You'll lose your money. You'll lose your health. You'll lose everything. Oh, yeah. Your dad sucked. You want to pay him back? Okay, you can pay him back. Down the stretch, the only thing you're going to have is a bag of regrets. That's the only thing the devil leaves with you before you die. He leaves you at your hospital bed, in your hospice bed, at the emergency room. You'll see a, a bag right beside you. It's invisible, spiritual. It's full of regrets. That's the only thing the devil will leave you. Why? Because you had to do it your way. See, you had to, you had to say it. Hey, nobody's listening to me. I'm going to run my mouth. You had to do it. You, you, your dad was a psycho. Everybody agrees. Yeah, he was a rotten person, 100%. What he did was wrong. Everybody agrees. Wow. But you had to trash him and turn on him. And I never spoke to him. I told him. Wow. You cursed yourself, son. Wow. And you will become a mighty person, but you will fall. You will fall. But not after tonight. You're going to repent of it. Let me give you an idea. Raise your hand if you had a kook of a dad. Your dad was nuts. Look at the hands go up. Look over here. Anybody here have a dad who was whack? If you're sitting by your dad right now, don't raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, you don't understand. Almost, there were so many people in our society that have bad dads. I'm telling you, it's as common as anything in the world. It really is. You, you don't see it too often. Particularly at my end of the business, the counseling end. No. Almost everybody that comes see me had, had a bad dad. Or at least a bad mom. One of the two was bad. Usually. <laughs> at least one of them was bad. Like she said, a lot of times both of them are. That I see all the time. I got a skewed, you know, uh, exposure. 
but it's, it's common as anything to have a, a dad who's ungodly, uh, un, un, unfair, you know, alcoholic, uh, cheater, uh, this and that. It goes on. The list goes on. Bad dads have all kinds of traits. But had you handled it like Jonathan, your life wouldn't have ended up like a piece of crap. And we can break that curse off you tonight. The blood of Jesus can do that. It has that kind of power. You know power Jonathan only dreamed about. He never saw God's son. You have been with God's son. You're the majority. Oh boy, the weapons of war, parents. Man of God. Let's close it out then and look at Jonathan. What an unusual person. Faced all kinds of adversity in his life. Grew up with a mentally ill dad. No, he wouldn't bend. He wouldn't do it. You don't have to do it either. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the blood of Jesus. He didn't have that. You got a bad dad? We're going to pray for your dad tonight. If he's dead, we're going to repent of every bad thing we said about him. After I came to the Lord, my daughter, youngest daughter, Tracy, led me to the Lord. I had a complete change of attitude toward my dad. I raised my hand. Did you notice that when I asked you to raise your hand? My dad was terrible. <clears throat> I hated him when I was young. I hated my dad. I had no respect for him. None. He screwed up. He was a, he was a textbook chronic screw-up. <clears throat> We lived like white trash. We never had any money. They were drunks. You know the routine. <coughs> I'll tell you what. I heard a sermon one time years ago, soon after I had come to the Lord, that had me down at the altar crying. I'd have given anything had I run into Mike Smith the day I got saved and would have told me about these curses that can fall on you when you hate your dad. <coughs> I'd love to run into me. Most people see that as the opposite. They see me somewhere and they go, oh God, they duck. I'd have loved to run into Mike Smith who just told me the truth blatantly, bang, flat out like that, set a sugar coat and something, or trying to watch out for my feelings so I know how my feelings hurt. Oh, hey, I want my feelings hurt because huh, it hurts. No, I'd rather have somebody just come right up in my face, hey Mike, let me explain a spiritual principle to you, son. Your dad, yeah, the guy was a goof. I get it. But you hated your dad. And you brought a curse on your life. And I had that curse on my life. I had relationships blowing up constantly, up and down financial problems, everything. I had the curse on me. I had this life going. I'm telling you, these curses, they live. you live life like a yo-yo if you got a parental curse on you I'm dead serious things go good for a while my god then the bottom drops out of everything you can't even believe it I thought I had this and like five things went wrong and it happens decade after decade I'm not even kidding I had that and I got rid of it that day at the altar with tears I confessed my sin see I didn't pull a Saul <coughs> I didn't need Samuel to come over to me. Hey, no, no, it was you, son. No, I knew it was me. I had conviction, Holy Ghost conviction. That's the best thing you can ever have, Holy Ghost conviction. That's the greatest thing in the world. And I repented. I apologized to God for saying all them bad things about my dad and, and verbally saying, you know, this and that. I felt it lift. I felt it lift. I called my dad. I apologized to him. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He ruined my childhood. 
And I'm calling him apologizing. Apologize for what? My sin. I had bad feelings for him. I had ought. I had ne negative thoughts about him. I disrespected him. I did this and that. My dad just died a few months ago. We were the best of friends for years. Wow. Talking on the phone and laughing and loving. Why is that? Because he changed and became a great dad. No, he never became a great dad. I changed. Wow. You don't understand. You got to change. I got to change. Oh my God, I'm starting to get, a, get hemorrhoids. <laughs> no, see, Christians don't like to change. That's, that's like telling them, tell them to eat rat poison. But God says, if you'll change, I'll send you my spirit. Yeah. And I'll fight your battles for you. Yeah. And you step out on faith, and I'll route that garrison for you. And I'll send you a Holy Ghost earthquake. Yeah. That's what repentance brings. I left that altar in tears. I got up in joy. I called my dad the next day, apologized to him. Best of friends ever since. Best of friends. Laughing and what he did to my mom and what he done to my sister and me. I nailed that to the cross. Amen. Yep, that curse lifted off of me. Everything got better. Money started rolling in. Everything. You got a curse on you. I'm telling you, it'll affect everything. Your health, your finances, your relationships. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, folks. I'm not making this stuff up. I see it all the time. People got curses on them. They're, they're dangerous. Curses are dangerous. And demons put curses on you. People speak them over you, and then the spirits carry them to you. See, that's how it works. It's a transference in the spirit world. <laughs> my dad, uh, you know, they would get drunk and my mother would run her mouth all night and then he'd, then he'd end up slapping her. Or I'd wake up at one in the morning hearing the furniture breaking. You know, so you have sixth grade kids, seventh grade kids running out in the living room trying to break up the fight. And trying to get him off of my mom. They're both drunk. Right? I mean, I'm not telling you anything new. I've met 10,000 people in counseling session that had worse childhood than I did. Much worse. <clears throat> but the point isn't the childhood. The point is the curse on me from what I said about my mom and dad. I had no respect for my mother and I hated my dad. Well, that, that killed me. The devil used that to kill me. He, he slaughtered me. And I didn't do it. But I did do that. Eric, am I right? Eric. I'm telling you. Jonathan, of all the horrible things his dad did, and Saul was worse dad than my dad, by far. My dad never killed anybody or tried to cur kill anybody. He wouldn't do that. He didn't have the heart for murdering people. Saul was a mentally ill psychopath. My dad wasn't. He was just kind of a self-centered, egoized person who didn't care much for family members. I forgave him. I truly did. Why? Why did I do that? Because I had a brother Mike's a good person? <laughs> you got to be kidding I sucked as a person. God told me to do it. I obeyed the word of the Lord. I didn't question it. Because I had Holy Ghost conviction. YouTubers, I'm talking to you now. I had a Holy Ghost conviction. I staggered down to the altar in tears, repenting of it. And my mom, all the bad things I said about her. Repented of it. And God took that curse off of me. He broke it. I didn't even know I had it. I thought I was just, you know, in a secular world, it's bad luck, rotten karma. You, know, you make different words up and apply it to it. No, it's a family curse, fell on me. I dishonored my parents. And I paid a bad price for it. But mercy Amen. delivered me. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy delivered me. Hallelujah. 
Raise your hand if you had a bad dad. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus. Here are my friends. They had bad dads. I had a bad dad. Jonathan, the man of God, had a bad dad. And I had curses on me from my parents. My mom and dad were not good, were not good parents. They made bad choices. They did a lot of bad things, but I happen to know, Lord, from my career as a counselor, 37 years, there's a lot of people in church like me that had bad parents. I am far from alone. In fact, I'm in the majority. I really believe that. I'm probably in the majority. And I know these curses are real. And right now, in the name of Jesus, every person in this room who verbally degraded their father or mother and said bad things about them and pointed out truthful things about them that they did that were bad and you said truthful things about them that they had done this wrong and that wrong and that way and you were correct about it you're going to repent of that right now in the name of Jesus that's not your business that's God's business God will handle your parents he is the justice and the judge of all not you we are not judges of others we are servants of the most high god and you're going to repent of that right this second right now that's prophetic dear jesus please forgive me for i said bad things about my dad and my mom and my life has been horrible i see what brother mike's talking about i've had curses on my life <clears throat> And I want these curses broke off right now. And I already forgave my parents, and that's good. But I haven't got this curse off of me because I haven't confessed to what I said about my mom and my dad. And tonight, I'm going to follow the example of the man of God, Jonathan. I'm going to follow Jonathan because you put... His life story in the Bible for me to learn from and I learned from it tonight. I was here for brother Mike's teaching I read them scriptures. I read those scriptures And I'm going to do what Jonathan did. I'm going to repent of having bad feelings negative words criticisms lies Angry words from my parents when I was young right now in the name of Jesus <clears throat> Now, if you had a rotten mother or dad, just stand up real quick. Just stand up here. We're going to pray for you individually. Ministry team is going to come up behind you. Close your eyes there. <coughs> you had bad parents. You had bad parents. Like mine or worse. Like mine or worse. A lot of people had worse than I had. That's for sure, 100%. Stand up. You had a rotten parent right now. Okay, close your eyes now. We're going to pray for you. Raise your hands. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me. For every negative thing I said about my mom. Every negative thing I ever said about my dad. I am so sorry. I did not know I was bringing a satanic curse upon me. The Bible says that you dishonor your mother or your father. You are cursed. And tonight, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, that the incredible Son of God became... A curse for me. He became my curses. He became sin for me. And I want to be forgiven tonight, Lord. And I want this curse destroying my relationships, my emotions, my health, my family, my money, my career, whatever it's destroying. <coughs> whatever it is, I want it broken off in the name of Jesus because I'll repent of it right now. If my parents are still alive right now, I'm going to do what you told Brother Mike to do. I'm going to call them tomorrow and apologize. I'm going to apologize right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus, <coughs> I'm going to apologize. Come on. I am so sorry, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I will apologize right now. I'm going to call them. God, forgive me for what I've done. I want this curse broken off of me now. Right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Right now. I want this curse. I want all my demons from my mother and my dad out of my body. I want every demon from my mother come out. 
every spirit from my Father that transferred into my body through my filthy words, my cursing words, my critical words, my negative words. I want every spirit out of my body right now. <coughs> come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in the... Come on, let your tears go, son. Let your tears go. There you go. Come on now. You're getting healed tonight. Let your tears go. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Say it. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Jesus became a curse for me. I repent of hurting my mom and dad. My dad was as rotten as King Saul. I forgive him right now. There they go. Keep yawning. Keep yawning. There it is. Keep yawning. That was a demon coming out. Big yawn. Come on. Stop talking. You yawn. Repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on right now. There they go. That's the anointing. Come on out. Every demon from my mother. Come out of me. Every demon from my father. Come out. <laughs> right now. Come out. Come out. Every curse break off of me. <laughs> every negative word, every negative thought come off of me. Right now. The curse of King Saul come off of me. King Saul demons come out. King Saul demons come out right now. Mother, come out of me. Dad, come out now. <laughs> repent of it. Just repent of it right now. Repent quickly. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is moving now. Come out, you rotten devil. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Satan, I forgive my dad. My stepdad. Come on now. Ouch, you brother. Come out of that body right now, you demon of fear. I curse you right now. Come out of her. Come out of the woman of God. There he is right there. That's him right there. Come on out. Come out right now. Church demons. Kundalini, come out. Church spirits, come out of there right now, quickly. Come out of the woman of God. You child abuser, let her go. You child abuser, let her go. Come out of there, you pervert. Right now, come out, you pervert. Let her go. Let her go right now. Come out. Come out. Satan, lose your hold of me. <laughs> Satan, lose your hold. Come out of my body. <laughs> come out. Quickly come out. Quickly. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out of there, buddy. Ugly man. Come out right now. Satan, go. Satan, come out. Come out. I repent. I repent of every ugly thing I ever said. All the curse words, yes. railing at God, hating other people. I'll repent of it in Jesus' mighty name. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Every ugly man. Come on, honey. Who hurt you? Who did it? Who? Oh. Who did it? You did it to yourself? Okay, raise your hands. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for being hard on myself. For hating myself. For carrying that demonic bag of regrets, Brother Mike talked about. Regrets. Please forgive me, Lord. I receive your mercy. I receive your mercy. Please forgive me for hating myself. Please forgive me for hating myself. 
I'm so sorry. Say it. I'm so sorry, Lord. Help me. I'm so sorry, Lord. Help me. I'm so sorry, Lord. God, forgive me. I want all these self-hatred demons out of me tonight. Take a big breath and blow. Good girl. Blow again. Come out of me. Come out. Blow again. Come out of there. Come out, devil. Come out of her quickly. Come out of her right now. Rejection. You had a stroke? You did? That's a spirit in your brain. Take a big breath and blow. Come out of that head. Come out of there, you rotten spirit. Go. Come out of there. Come out of there. Stroke, I bind your power. Heal. Heal. Evil, come out now. Go. Saul demons, out. Mental illness, come out now. Go. Self hatred, I command you. Go. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing me, Lord. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Jesus. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Pray harder. Forgive me. All the ugly things I've said. All this evil come out of my mouth. God, have mercy on my soul. Come on. Just repent of it. Repent of it right now. Say it. Say it. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. What's wrong with you, sweetheart? No, I was just what you were. We were saying, and you know, um, I I'm repenting because I have my grandson living with me right now because his dad hasn't been in his life for 16 years, and like I brought him from Texas, and me and him, you know, I always say things, you know, about his dad, you know, calling him a piece of shit and things like okay, that. Okay, here, stop that. Close your eyes. Okay. Father God, forgive this poor woman for yes. what she's done. Yes. She's repenting of it tonight. She wants to be healed in her heart. His dad hurt him really bad and damaged his soul and his emotions and his heart. The boy is wounded, deeply wounded. And the dad did it like King Saul. But I, unlike Jonathan, turned against him. And I helped make, there he is, come on out devil, keep coughing, daddy's coming out now, there he goes. There it is right there, every demon from the dad, come out, there it comes, come on, keep coughing, come on out, come out, there it comes, go, there it comes, next one, go, keep coughing, there he goes, King Saul, come out of there, come out every King Saul demon. Come out, hatred of the dad, yeah. hating his guts, <coughs> cursing him. Come out, you evil spirit, cursing. Come out right now, go. Damaging my grandson, come out right now. Damaging, bringing demons to my grandson. Oh my God, Lord, forgive me. God, forgive me for what I said. Satan used me to damage my family. Forgive me, Father. I was an instrument of Satan, but tonight, I repent of it and I become an instrument of the Lord. And I command these spirits to come out of my spine. Come out. Lift out of her. Lift out of there. Come out of her lungs right now. Come on up. There he is. Tough. Come out of there. Come out. Let your tears go. There he comes. Come on out, devil. Come on out, Satan. Come out, you rotten devil. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. There it goes. There they go. Come on out. They're coming out now. Come on out, devil. Come out of there quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Pray harder. Dear God, forgive me. Pray harder. Come on. Keep going. God, forgive me. Come out of my head right now. Poison, come out of me. Food demons, come out. Food demon, come out of there. Come out right now. Spirit of infirmity and pain. Come out. Come on out. There he comes. Here he comes. Spirit of infirmity. Come out. Healing. Come in. Demon, come out. There he goes. 
come out of that body. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out. Poison, come out of her. Poison, go. Poison, go. Keep going, keep going. <coughs> Don't you try to stall. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. There it is. Hatred, come out. <coughs> Hatred, out. <coughs> Hatred will kill you. Hatred brings in cancer. You will die of cancer in a hospice in horror if you don't repent of hatred. Right now, do it now. Hatred and cancer, go. Come out. Hating the dad, come out. Come out. Come out of her spine, right there. Come out of her spine. There it is. Poison, come out. Poison. Drugs. Alcohol. Come out. Come out. Come out. Here he comes. Here he comes. Get out of there. Come out. Poison. There it comes. Satan, come out now. Fight for your life. Fight for your life. You have to go, bro. You have to go, bro. You have to go. Get out of that body. Oh, yeah. Demon of fear. Come out of that body right now. You're trying to kill him. Hospital demons. Come out. Every one of you. Hospital, go. Get out of there. I said go. Hospital demons. Come out of that body. Come out. Blood pressure spirits. Go. Come out of the spine quickly. Blood pressure, go. Blood pressure, go. Get out of there. Hurry up. Come out, I said. Come out, I said. You'll get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Spirit of death, go. Spirit of death, go. Death, come out. Death, go. Death, come out of that body. Death and dying, come out. Come out of there, spirit of death. Get that body. Every curse from him. Murder. Cursing you. We forgive them. Curses I command you. Break off the man of God. Break off of him. I want every demon from his dad. Out. Dad, come out. Come out of the stomach. Death. I love you, but I have to let you go now. There he comes. Dad, here he comes. There he is right there. Come on out. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on, Dad. Dad, come out of me. Dad, come out of me. Come out of me right now. Get out of my body. Everything for my dad. Go! Everything for my dad. Get out of my head. Get out of there. Come out of his heart. Leave his heart now. Go. Come out of his heart now. Go. Get out of there. Come out of his heart right now. Go. Come out. Get out of there. Come out of there. Dad. I'm leaving you now. I'm letting my dad go and my heavenly father replaces him now. I love you, Dad, but you must go. Leave me now. <laughs> out of my body. Get out of my body. Get out of my liver. Come out of my kidneys. Come out right now. Dad. Every curse. Mother. Go now. Mother. I love you, but I have to release you. Get out of my body right now. Stop stalling. Come out quicker. Hurry up. Come on. Hurry up and come out quicker. Get out of there. You're not going to the hospital again. Come out. Come out of there, you hospital demons. Spirit of infirmity, leave. Spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity, come out of that body. Spirit of infirmity, go. Spirit of infirmity, go. Are you the mother? No. Who's that? Right there. It's Dylan. Yeah, are you related to him? Well, he's my neighbor. Oh, he's your neighbor? What's wrong with you? Come I brought in heavy boys. What's wrong with you? Suicidal. Come out. Is he mentally ill? 
that has some mental health issues. Oh, okay. Suicide. Where was your parents? Well, the mother oh, all the mom. So I took a man. So I've been keeping him. And I've been ministering to him a little bit. But I, you know, I don't want him to try to push it on him. Uh, right. So I said, well, we need to go to that church. Right. So he agreed. I didn't. I said, I'm not going to force you. But I want you, if you want to go to Brother Mike, yeah. then let's go to Brother Mike. Now, what's your name? I'm Sister Gibson. Gibson? Yeah. Oh. Can I pray for you now? You can pray for me. Close your eyes. Okay. Lord, Sister Gibson has got a good heart, and she cares about people, and she loves you. Father God, if she picked up any kind of transfer spirit in her past from ministering to somebody who had demons, like this poor kid right here, he's loaded with them. If she picked up a transfer spirit hiding in her body anyway, manifesting in anxiety or bad weird dreams or freak accidents or chronic negative thoughts anything of that line this woman of God and servant of God is to be clear of transfer spirits in Jesus name okay, take a big breath blow oh, keep blowing Come on. Come on out. Come out of her. Come out of there. Told you to go. Come out. Told you to go. Come on. Transfers. Old lovers. Old husbands. Transfers. Come on. Come on out. Come out. Old sex partners. Come on. All them bad men that used me for my time, my money, and my body. Get out of my body right now. Come out, Satan. Loose your hold now. Come on out. Go now. I command you to let me go. Every bad man that ever touched me, any transfer spirit, go. Get out of my way. Stop doing that. Come on, act like quicker. Hurry up. All of them come out. Every one of them. All of them tonight, go. All of them tonight. All of them, or we die and go home. Die and go home, or all of them come out. Go, one or the other, go. Get out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of my body now. I command you to come out of my body right this second. Get out of my body right now. Get out of my body. Demon of death. Death. Death, there he is. Come in. Up. Death, come out of there. Death, take your car now. There he is. Demon of death right there. Come on out. That's him. Demon of death, out. Spirit of death, out. Get out of that body. Get out of there. Get out of there. I told you to come out of my kidneys. Go. Get out of my kidneys. Right now. Get out of my kidneys. Come out of my liver. Get out of my liver. There it is. Come out of my heart. Come out of there. Come up in Jesus' name. Come on up in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go, devil. Let's go, devil. Come out right now. See, you got to fight to be healed. You got to repent to be healed. If you're not going to repent, you're not getting healed. I want every man that ever touched this woman of God to come out right now. Every man. All the ugly men, all the heartbreaking disappointments. Come out of her stomach. Come out right now, quicker. Come on out, quicker. Hurry up, you filthy spirit. I command you to go. Get out of that body right now. Come out there, quicker. Come out quickly. Quickly. Quickly come out of that body. Every spirit for transferring to her son. Come out right now. Come out right now. Every demon in the boy. Every demon in that boy. Come on out. Come out. Every demon from the mother. Come out. The mother. Demons from the mother. Come out. Demons from the father. Demons from the father. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. 
the curse on the boy come off the mother come off hatred toward the dad come out right now hatred toward men come out right now hatred toward men hatred toward their father go in Jesus name disobedience or rebellion go come out right now come out right now hey will you go around there and hold that kid for her come out right now in the name of Jesus come out of that body right now get out of there hold it come out right now get out of there come out of there right now come out come out right now come out of that body right now go come out right now in Jesus mighty name come out right now take a big breath and blow I release all the sadness and sorrow of all these miserable years I release it now I release all these wounds from my parents both my mom and dad come out of me now come out of my room come out of my liver come out of my kidneys come out of my heart right now go right now go Go now. Go now. Come out there now. Come out, you rotten spirit. Come out, you rotten spirit. There they come. Keep coughing. Come out, you devil. Come out, you devil. Come out, that body, you devil. Come out, that body, you devil. Go. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Come out. All the disappointments. Every ugly man. All the heartbreaks. All the word curses from my mother. My mother. My mother and my dad. I must let them go tonight. Get out of that body quick. Come out quicker. Come out faster. Faster. Go now. Go now. Get out of that body right now. I told you I got the man of God. I know what you're doing. You're trying to have him give him a heart attack in the hospital. So they'll take him from there to the morgue. Come on, that body. I know what you're up to. Go. Out. Oh, my God. Out of that gut. Come up. Come up out of there quickly. Come out, you hospital murderer. Come out. Murder. Hospital murderer. Come out. Come out, you rotten devil. Come out. There he is. Get out of that body right now. Go on now. Get out of that body right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of that body quickly. There you go. Come out of my body in Jesus' name. Just repent of it. YouTubers, put your hand on your body wherever the pain is. Take command over that spirit. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the teaching button at the top. There's a teaching button at the top. Hit that button. Go down and look at the article, How Satan Controls the Mind. How Satan Controls the Mind. Satan's Counterattack. Read that article. Satan's kind. You will get hit within 48 hours of this service. You will get hit within 48 hours. They will try to steal everything you got today. 48 hours. Read that article. Satan's counterattack. Thursday night healing room right here with Brother Rick. The deliverance service at 7 o'clock. Don't miss it. Don't miss that service. 7 o'clock. Thursday night. I'll be back next Friday. The seminar. The Halloween seminars next Friday on Familiar Spirits. Man, you ain't going to believe this. 7 o'clock. Um, hey, um, uh, I talked to my boss about fixing the ceiling. Uh, and so we're, we're going to try to get that in um, sometime next, this week. No. So as soon as possible, bro. Cool? Appreciate it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. <laughs> <coughs> HardcoreChristianity.com I'm on the radio in Arizona every morning Monday through Friday at 7.30 10.10 a.m. I'm on every night on the computer DarkSkyRadio.com 9 p.m. every night Arizona time Next Friday night the seminar or is it the next week? 
I don't remember. I'll have to look at the website. But with the seminars coming up, go to the website and sign up for a free seat. <laughs> What's going on? Relationships. Um, I've never been married. I'm 48. Did you hurt your mother or dad? I love my mom and dad. I know you loved them, but did you hurt them? Did you so criticize them? No. Okay. I Were really they good didn't. people? Yes, they did okay. their best. They did their best. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of a lot of upheaval. And I was the youngest. I'm I'm the youngest of four. I'm the, the baby. So did you get treated better, better or worse as the youngest? I, I'm like Joseph. And um, then after that, did you get involved with a bunch of bad men? Have you been pretty all your life like you are now? Pretty? Okay. Were men attracted to you? Okay, that's it. Raise your hands. What's your name? Alyssa. Alyssa. Oh. Lord, you see this beautiful woman standing here? The demons used her for target practice. They kept sending her bad men with a bunch of promises, but they left just using her. And while they were having sex, something transferred in there. And they're going to come out tonight in the name of Jesus. Every ugly man from the gym, every one of them, every guy with all the promises, the good-looking ones, all of them, they were all liars. It was all a demonic parade. And I command every spirit, a transfer spirit I picked up in romance, in love, fake love, sex, every orgasm I had with these dis infected men, I command those spirits to come out. Come out of me right now. Come out of my body. Come out of there. Every ugly man. I repent of it. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Come out. Every guy from the gym. Yeah. Come out of there. Every one of them. All the BS, all the lines they ran on me. It's all lies. Come out. Spirit, husband, I command you to come out of my body. You stole my husband and left me single. Come out. You filthy spirit husband. Get out of that body right now. There he is. Come on. Keep coughing. Keep going. There they come. Go. Keep going. Glory to God. There it is. Here they come. Keep coughing. Go, Satan. Go, you rotten devil. Come out. Every husband. Every spirit husband. Get out of that woman of God. Come out of her. Come out of there. Every ugly man. All of them. Every one of them. They all have to go. They all have to go. Every one of them. I had good parents. I should have never ended up like this, but I let too many ugly men in. Oh my God. Save me, Lord. Every transfer. Every one of them. All the lovers. All the date rapes. Everything. Come out. Get out of me. All the man haters. There they are. Keep coughing. Man haters, go. Man hater, go. Go right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go. There they are. They're coming out right now. Good girl. Come on, let's get him. There it is. Keep going. They're coming out right now. Hallelujah. They're coming out right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan. Let go of my mind. Mind control. Come out of my head. Mind control. Mind control. You get out of my head right now. Controlling my mind. I know you're in there. You always lead me away from the Lord. You turn my mind over stuff that's useless. Amounts to nothing. You get out of my head. In Jesus' holy name, I command you to come out of my head, out of my brain. Stroke spirit. I bind your power. Stroke spirit. You get out of my head right this second. You get out of my body right now. I'm turning my life over to the Lord, and you're not going to take my mind anymore. You let my mind go. You let my mind go in Jesus' mighty name. You let my mind go right now. Let go of me. 
sick of living a useless life. I'm sick of it. Sick of being disabled. Tired of it. Command you, Satan. Loose my body and my mind and let me go right now in the name of Jesus. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Let my mind go, you filthy devil. And let my body go too. I plead the precious blood of Jesus, the Son of God, over my brain, and over my body. I command these seducing spirits that got in when I had my stroke to leave me now. Come out of my head right now. I command you to go. I command you to go. Say that. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. And a girl. I command you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Command you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Next Friday, I'll see you at 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock Eastern, for another unusual Bible study from Brother Mike. I know what you're thinking. Hey, this guy's uh, a little bit odd. Yeah, I'm a little odd, but I'm sincerely trying to help you. I'll see you on the radio next week. And I'll see you next time.